Namaste, everyone. Welcome, welcome to this Friday evening yoga. So last week we talked a lot about um, creating a positive, or we talked a little bit about creating a positive mindset and we asked some questions at the end of the class. And this week I wanted to focus a little bit more on this positive versus negative, this good versus bad. I feel personally that that's too much of a rigid dichotomy. It's too black and white, not, uh, excuse the pun. Um, so uh, instead we're going to focus, shift our focus to a healthy mindset. And what's healthy for one person might be different for somebody else. So it might not be as helpful for somebody else. So trying to think about the things that we can do that create a healthy mindset. And in the morning, those of you who've already been to yoga this week will have heard this, but in the morning, I like to start with a few deep breaths. So I wake up, I spend a few moments in bed, very rarely does the alarm go off before I've woken up. So I wake up, spend a few moments in bed doing some really deep belly breaths. And if you're familiar with a full yogic breath, you could choose that one or Ujjayi breath, not so good for prolonged lying down, but a nice deep breath. And then I think of something that I'm really looking forward to, maybe that day, maybe in the week, it may be sometime in the future, but something that I can get happy and feel good inside about. And that helps to stop all of the chatter that starts immediately on waking. Um, and put that to one side and just focus on that happiness or that contentment or that uh, thing that I'm looking forward to, the anticipation of joy. And then checking which nostril is breathing the most, which is most active. And if you do that now, if you take your finger and just run it underneath your nose as you take a long, deep exhalation through the nose. And you might need to do it one, one more time. And you might be able to see or feel which of those two nostrils is the most dominant. When you wake up in the morning, that's the foot you want to put down first. So it will change. It's not the same every day. It's not the same even every hour of the day. So when you get out of bed, step onto the foot of your active side and you will be moving with the energy of your body rather than moving against it, which is when we have those days when you wake up and then you drop something and then you spill something and you walk into something. Those are the days when we start off on the wrong foot. And it isn't just an old wives tale, it is yoga science behind it. So without further ado, we're going to get on with our class, but I'd like you to try those three things for the rest of this week and see if you can cultivate that slightly healthier mindset of feeling just a little bit lighter inside. Let's get started. We'll take the feet nice and wide apart and wide for you might be narrower than for someone else. So choose something that's comfortable. Soft in the knees and we're gonna bounce the knees. So you don't need to bounce much and you don't need to bounce at all if it doesn't suit your knees, but we're just gently creating that real sense of connection down into the feet. You don't have to do the hand actions, but if you want to, you can. You can do any hand actions, in fact. And then we're going to bring our weight into the center, but keeping the knees a little soft, just to create that pliability, that bounce in the body, and then twist from side to side. So as we do our Kati Chakrasana, our ragdoll, we want to focus on turning around the central line of the body. So instead of swaying, which we may get to later, um, we're twisting around the line that travels from the center of the crown of the head down through the center of the body to the space in the center between the feet. And perhaps a gentle lift of our abdominal muscles, a softening of the shoulders, the elbows, the fingers, letting the hands lightly tap the body wherever feels good to you. And if you'd like to, you can pivot on your toes as well. So you can free the legs a little bit here, 
Still keeping that pliability, that bounce in the knees, just a touch of bounce. We're not bouncing, bouncing yet. And I know what it's like to have a screen in the room and sometimes your eyes stay with the screen, but if you can, try to listen to the instruction and feel your way without looking for the visual cue, particularly with this practice that we do all of the time. We're going to add a little bounce in the middle, so bending the knees and then twisting, uh, dip and twist and twist. You don't have to add the bounce if it doesn't suit your knees. Please don't do it. Touch your opposite shoulder in front of you and your opposite hip behind. Very good. And we'll do a couple more to each side. Before we lose the bounce, continue to pivot on the toes, bring the feet to steadiness, and then allow the whole body to gently come back to stillness a little at a time, losing its momentum gradually. When you come back to stillness, closing the eyes or gazing gently downward, and just feeling the effect of your practice. So Kati Chakrasana is designed to release tension from the postural muscles of the body, but also to stir up our energy, to begin to uh, allow it to rise and to spread it out from the center where it can get stagnated. And so it is the beginning of our feeling good and it is where we start our awareness for the evening. When you're ready, you can blink your eyes open awesome source. Um, and we're going to do a very similar practice, but swaying from side to side. So we're going to take the arms across the body and reach away from the opposite toes, and then come into the center and reach up, up to the opposite side. So we're just going from side to side, allow your shoulders to be nice and loose. You don't need to hunch them up. We can relax our faces. If you have an inner smile, you can allow it to blossom forward onto your face. If you haven't quite found your inner smile, it's okay. You can fake it till you make it, if you like. Or you can just allow the face to relax, the forehead to soften, the jaw to relax. A little bit side to side. Again, the bounce in the knees is optional, but it makes it uh, quite a nice fluid motion, fluid movement. And we're just going to do two more to each side. I think I started on this side. And then again, just bringing the uh, legs back to near stillness and letting the arms find their way back to steadiness again. Super duper. I now feel like I've got my legs really wide apart, so bringing them a bit closer together if like me, you've ended up that way. And we're going to roll our shoulders. So in yoga, we've got lots of lovely tools for cultivating that inner sunshine. Let's roll the opposite way as well. And two of them are backward bends and twists. Allowing your shoulders to rest for a moment. So in backward bending, we open up the front of the body, we increase the strength of the back of the body, and we lift our spirits. It's a, it's, it's a very physical demonstration of it, but we lift our spirits. It can uh, help us to find that uh, inner joy. And in our twists, we warm ourselves from the center. So if you think about the last time you were uh, sad or worried or afraid, um, then perhaps you remember that you felt a little bit cold as well. So we can warm the body with twists, which helps us to feel that little bit of ease as well. So we're going to work with those two motions uh, tonight. We're going to work with all of them, but we're going to work a little bit with those two motions as well. Let's prepare the shoulders a little bit better by softening the knees. We'll leave our right hand down, soften that left elbow, and then make big circles. You can start with small circles, if small circles suit you better. But if you want to, you can make big circles uh, or gradually build up to big circles. 
We're going to try and keep a little bit of effort here in the tummy muscles and also find that movement through the whole torso. So if you feel able to, you can move the sides of the body, you can do a side of sort of side bend, twist, twirl, twirl, spiral. And then when you're ready, you can reverse the motion, just going the opposite way. And if it feels uh, like a lot for your shoulder, just do a little and have a rest and come back and do a little bit more. Or we'll just rest. That's okay too. Very good. We'll finish with one more on this side and then we will spend a moment just to feel the difference between the two sides with the arms nice and relaxed and do the same to the opposite side. Soft elbow, nice big circles. You can start small and work up to it. And then perhaps a, doing a little bit more with the torso as well. And make sure that that feels comfortable to you. And as you do, perhaps you notice how much you've got movement in the spine, the legs, the ankles, across the feet. Let's reverse that to go the opposite way. So just noticing, being aware. I'm trying not to get too dizzy, which I do occasionally get when I'm doing this. Super duper. We'll do one more in this direction. And again, coming slowly and gently back to center and observing the effect. So if you feel comfortable, you can close the eyes. If you feel dizzy, keep them a bit open and absorb the effect. Feel the warmth across the shoulders, the warmth in the center of the body. Feel the tingling the, that spreads out through the body. Good stuff. Okay, so we're going to just do a little neck movement now. So gently turning the head from side to side. And you can go at your own pace. So some people like to really slow this down and explore, but we're not pushing and we're not striving. So if you meet resistance in the body, move to it and then away from it. Don't push through the resistance. That feeling of uh, like you want to release a stiffness and then ear to shoulder. So whenever you're ready, gentle ear to shoulder. Good stuff. And then this time, when we come to center, we're going to turn to look towards the right halfway. So not all the way, halfway. And then there, we're going to take our ear to our shoulder. So you get this, uh, sense of length down the front left hand side of the neck and from here we're going to roll our chin towards our chest and then roll the ear back towards the shoulder just a quarter circle chin to chest ear to shoulder see how that feels on this side and when you're ready coming back to the center just observing then turning halfway to the left ear to shoulder, left ear to left shoulder, experiencing that sense of length first, and then rolling your chin towards your chest, and then your left ear to your left shoulder. Chin to chest, left ear to left shoulder. We'll do a couple more like this. Just feeling the effect in the neck. When you're ready, you can come back to center. And if you need to, if that has uh, open something in your shoulders. You can roll out your shoulders a little bit, give yourself any wiggle that will help. Super stuff. So we are going to bring the feet a little bit closer together now um, and begin to work into some uh, larger movements with our upper bodies. So bringing the palms of the hands together, interlace the fingers and then lengthen the backs of the hands away from you. And at the same time, scoop your belly in a little bit and just allow your chin to drop towards your chest, but not forcing it down. Take a moment to breathe into that space between the shoulder blades to feel like you're almost reaching away and spreading that space between the shoulder blades. Then when you're ready, lift your chin and allow your back to become long again. Turn your palms out the opposite way. If it's toughy to hold your hands like this, simply hold one wrist in the opposite hand. There's no need to uh, have the fingers interlaced. 
We're going to press through the palms and reach up. So the hands are over the head. And then here, we're gonna soften the knees and make little circles with the upper body. So we want the knees to be soft so we can activate the pelvic floor, if you know where that is, and the belly muscles. And we're making almost like a circle with the palms of the hands on the ceiling. I've just put on hand cream and I'm beginning to regret it. And then the opposite way as well. Just feeling that uh, gentle motion. It's not a gentle motion, it's quite a strong motion, but it's a subtle motion at the bottom of the rib cage. And then coming back to centre, we're going to separate the hands and just let the arms float down to the side to give the shoulders a little bit of a rest and swing our arms backwards and forwards. Aces. So a lot of what we're doing today is to do with chest opening as our back bending and a little bit of twisting as well. So we're going to come back to standing. We're going to interlace the fingers again. But again, if you are holding, then hold the opposite wrist, press the palms away, lift the arms up. And this time we're going to settle the shoulders down. So trying to keep length in the arms, but settle the shoulders down. Here, just turning the chin from side to side, just to make sure the neck is free. We're not holding there. And then inhale in the center, lift the belly and exhale as you gently lean over to the right. You're not trying to get anywhere. It's just a gentle lean. Inhale back to center and then gently lean to the left. Inhaling up and exhaling over. Inhaling up and exhaling over. One more to each side if you can, if not just resting, exhaling to the right, inhale to center and exhaling to the left. Inhale back to center, separate the hands and just float the arms down to the side again. Oh, and that hopefully feels really nice. So rolling the shoulders if you need to roll the shoulders, shaking out the wrists if that feels like it might help with the hands as well. Aces. Uh, so now we're going to bring the feet a little bit closer together. So for those of you who prefer to work with a little bit more room between the feet, you can continue to do that. And those of you who would like to practice with the feet together can bring the feet together. I like to touch my big toes, but not worry too much about my heels because my feet are not straight like most people. So we're going to still allow a touch of softness in the knees. We don't want to lock the knees straight. We're going to leave our right hand on our right hip, breathe in and reach the left arm up and then press down into the left foot and breathe out as you reach the left arm over and gently press your hips to the left. So reaching to the right, but pressing the hips to the left. We're going to inhale just up and then we're going to exhale back into this side bend. Pressing firmly down into the left foot, inhaling up, exhaling over, letting your hips uh, lengthen, inhaling up and exhaling over. This time we're going to inhale up and exhale as we turn the left palm, float the left arm down to the side. Very nice. Take that left hand, put it on your left hip, and then we'll do the same on the opposite side. So inhale the right hand up, press down into the right foot, and then exhale, hips go to the right, arm goes to the left. Inhaling back up to center, and exhaling over, inhaling up, exhaling over, inhaling up, and exhaling over, inhaling up, and this time turning the palm and floating as you exhale the arm down to the side. Once we've done that, sometimes that uh, makes the legs feel a little stuck. So let's shake out the legs, shake out the arms if you want to. Super duper. Okay, so we're going to take the arms around behind the body now and interlace the fingers here or again hold hand to wrist. Roll the shoulder blades towards each other. And here I'd like you to experiment with what uh, position is best for you behind your back. So what we want to do is keep a little softness in the elbows. And here, if you draw your elbows towards each other, what effect does that have in your chest, in your pectoral area? So Elbows towards each other, does that feel good? You can let the elbows come apart a little bit, maybe halfway is the best place for you. 
And then keeping the elbows touch soft, extend the arms a little bit and see if that improves or increases your feelings of length and openness and space without really overstretching. What I'd like you to avoid is sagging into your wrists and making your arms really straight and your wrists really bent. So if you can, keeping the palms towards each other, keeping that softness in the elbows, keeping that openness in the front of the body. And here, we're just going to turn the head from one side to another a couple of times. And then in the center, take the chin to the chest and then lift the chin. One more time, chin to chest and lift the chin. And then very gently relax the arms, separate the hands, and just turn the palms forward, let the arms really settle here down by the sides. Awesome sauce, well done guys. So we better do something for our low body before I forget all about it. So let's take the feet a little wider again. We will bend the knees nice and soft and just give our hips a little bit of a stir. So to begin with, I'd like you to try and keep your feet still-ish and your head still-ish and move your hips around your center. You can, you don't have to put your finger on your head, you can if you want to, um, but uh, you can have your hands on your hips, sometimes that helps. We'll go in the opposite direction as well. We're trying to lubricate those pelvises and joints and such like. I shall stop talking now. Coming back to center, and this time we're going to do the same thing again, but make the movement come into our whole body. So if you would like to, you can begin to really lean forward as your, your uh, buttocks go behind you, and you can lean back a little bit as they come in front, leaning away from the sides. We'll do one more in this direction. And then we'll go the opposite way as well. Woo, she says, no. Not concentrating, almost fell off my feet. And I've got both of them on the floor as well. Terrible. <laughs> Very good. Let's do one more in this direction. And then coming to standing again. Release the hands, shake out the hands. And we're going to do one leg at a time. So chair yogis, I'd recommend you sit down for this. Anyone is welcome to grab a wall to hang on to or a chair back to hang on to. But if you prefer to do this uh, sitting down, then that's fine too. So for this, we will, I'm gonna stand off my mat because it's easier to balance, not on a spongy surface. Um, so hands onto the hips. We're gonna lift the knee, the, the left knee up in front of us and just bend and straighten the leg. That's it. Try to do it with balance. If you can, choose a point of focus ahead of you that's not moving and look at that one spot. Bend and straighten the leg and then let the, the foot be really relaxed and just make a stirring motion with the foot like you were drawing on the floor with your big toe in one direction and then the other. Smashing, just about holding it together. Don't be afraid of wobbling, it shows you're alive. And then, Lengthening the leg out in front of you and making big circles with the ankles in, oh, one ankle, sorry, and in the other direction as well. Excellent. We're going to step onto that foot and take a moment to observe the difference between the two sides, firm in the belly, raising the right knee in front and just bending and lengthening the knee. So we're not trying to, to kick really high. We're not trying to lengthen the leg to be absolutely straight, just lubricating the knee joint. And then when you're ready, let the foot hang and make circles on the floor. A little stirring. I like to call this my preparation for the Moulin Rouge. Obviously you're all going to be professional dancers by the end and the other way. I have no intention of dancing at the Moulin Rouge. I have to point out. Super duper. And then lengthening the leg and just rolling your foot at the ankle a few times in each direction. That's it. Fabulous. Let's float that foot to the floor and just observe the difference between the two sides. And then 
It, we need a touch of space on either side, but I'm going to do this facing you. If you're at the long end of your mat, then that's going to be the right place for you as we progress through this series. And we're going to do something called the standing salute. And the reason we're doing this is because it takes us through all of the six movements of the spine and it provides a, a really nice openness across the chest, which we're trying to achieve today. So with your feet a comfortable distance apart, they don't have to be super close together, um, but you probably don't want them wider than your body. We'll start with our Tadasana. So lifting all of the toes off the mat, spreading them out as much as you feel able to, and then pressing the big toes down, letting the other toes come down to the mat as individually as they can. That's quite the, uh, the skill to have, and it's something that develops over time. Once you've got your toes spreading out, we want to feel the parts of the foot that are pressing downwards. So the ball of each toe, the ball of the center of the foot, the outside edge of the foot perhaps, and the heel of the foot. And everywhere you feel the foot in contact with the floor or your mat or your uh, carpet, then allow your energy to move down. So to, to ground, to make that contact, to surrender to gravity and then wherever you feel space between the underneath of the foot and the floor perhaps the back of the toes or the instep take a moment to feel the lightness of the air touching that space and feel that lightness turn into an energy that moves upwards so it draws up it naturally resists gravity and helps to lift the body up we're going to affirm the buttocks just a touch, not gripping, just a little activation. Lift in the pelvic floor, lift in the abdomen, just a little again. Roll the shoulder blades slightly back so that you can turn the palms of the hands forward quite easily and lengthen through the crown of the head. Just making sure that the head's not in front of the body, but centered over the body. Mountain pose. We'll take a deep breath in. And a long breath out. Trying to keep this sense of activating lift without gripping, without holding, just a resisting of gravity. We'll take a deep breath in again. And as you exhale, bring your palms together at the center of your chest. As you inhale this time, reach the arms up over the head if you can. And as you exhale, Gently bend to your right side, press into your left foot. Inhale back up to center and exhale to the opposite side. Inhale back up to center and exhale as you separate the hands. Inhale in the middle, find a lift in the chest and exhale. Imagine you're holding a beach ball, but you're doing your side bend. Inhale back to center and exhale to the opposite side. Inhale back to center. As you exhale, reach your right hand backwards and your left hand forwards. Inhale, draw the hands back up and twist back to the front. Exhale, reach the right hand forwards and the left hand backwards. Inhale back to center. We're going to do that one more time to each side. Exhale as you reach the right hand back, left hand forwards. Inhale up. And exhale as you twist in the opposite direction. And inhale back to center. Exhale as you settle the shoulders down. Inhale as you lift your chest, soften your knees. And exhale as you fold forward. Chair yogis folding forward to something unless you are confident that you want to fold all the way forward to the floor. Here it's our first uh, forward bend of the day, so or uh, of this class. So we're going to leave our hands towards the floor. Knees can be very bent and simply paddle through the backs of the legs. So lengthening one heel and then the other, swaying the bottom a little bit from side to side. Try to relax the back of your neck. Unless you have really low blood pressure, that's generally an okay thing to do. And if you want to, you can gently uh, move the head a little from side to side, the nose from side to side as you paddle through your heels or your feet, sorry. Then we're going to come back to the center 
And then we're going to bend the knees much deeper. So really dropping the bottom. Chair yogis, you won't have to do that quite so much. And then inhaling as you reach your hands forward, lift your head and your chest. And then press into your legs to stand really tall, opening the chest and then exhaling, bringing your hands together at the center of your chest as you finish. Excellent stuff. We're gonna just release the arms and let the breath go for a few breaths. So this is called an earth salute um, and uh, similar to a sun salute, but with fewer bits and pieces. Um, so we're going to do this through one more time, just as we did just now. So everyone's familiar with it. So feet spreading down, lifting up, standing tall, turning the palms forward in your Tadasana, lengthened position, finding space for the spine to organize itself upward. Inhale here. Exhale the hands to Namaste. Inhale, reach the arms up, find a lift in the belly. And as you exhale, press into the left foot as you lean to the right side. Inhale back to center and exhale, press into the right foot as you lean to the left. Inhale back to center and exhale as you separate the hands. Inhale again, lifting the chest, lifting the belly. Exhale, folding to the right, leaning to the right. Inhale back to center and exhale, leaning to the left. Inhale back to center. As you exhale, reach the left hand forward and the right hand backwards. You can keep your knees soft. Inhale back to center and exhale to the opposite side. Inhale back to center one more time each way with the twist, exhaling as you move. Inhale as you return and exhaling as you move. Inhaling as you return. Exhale, allow the shoulders to soften. Inhale, open the chest, lift the belly, maybe look slightly upwards. As you exhale, bend the knees and fold forward with your back as long as possible as you can for as long as possible into your forward bend. When you get down, perhaps you're not reaching the floor, that's okay. Hold elbow to elbow and allow the weight of the arms to aid the, the gravity, the surrender of the upper body. And we're just gently going to paddle through the knees again. And if you want to, you can keep the knees quite bent and just sway your tailbone from side to side or uh, yeah or push through the feet a little bit to do that but without lengthening the legs the other thing I like to do in a forward bend is to roll my shoulder blades down back just as I if I was standing to take them away from my ears and then turn my head side to side so you can try this one if you like I find it frees up the space down the side of the neck it feels fantastic and the weight of the head provides a little traction on the cervical spine there Coming back to center, we're going to bend the knees deeply and look forward and then reach the arms forward. We're dropping our bottom and lifting the chest and the head and the upper body up and exhaling the hands down to Namaste. Fantastic. Release your arms and organize your clothes if they've shifted as mine always seem to. Fantastic stuff. Okay, so we've done two of our standard earth salutes and we're going to add something to it. So this time, as you fold forward, chair yogis, if you're using a chair, we're in the forward bend, we're going to step the right foot back and then lift and lower the right leg three times, step it back in and then do the same thing with the left leg, lift and lower three times. It doesn't matter how high you go and it doesn't matter where it, it gets to or if the leg's straight or any of those things. So I'm going to face this way this time. Um, so in your yoga space, spreading your toes, getting your mountain pose working, lifting through the crown of your head, turning the palms forward, inhaling here. Exhaling the hands to Namaste. Inhale, reaching up. This time, we're going to exhale as we separate the hands. Inhale, lift the belly, and then exhale, lean to your right side. Inhale back to center, and exhale, lean to the left. So we're just doing one side bend, one side twist. Inhale back to center, exhale as you twist, right hand backwards, left hand forwards. 
Inhale back to center. Exhale as you twist to the opposite side. Inhale back to center. Exhale, open your chest. And then inhaling in the open chest position, exhale, bend the knees and fold forward from the hips all the way down to whatever support you can easily reach. If your feet are very far apart, just bring them a little bit closer together. Then here, with letting our breath find its natural rhythm, we want a little bit of uh, the effect of gravity drawing the crown of the head downwards, but only if that feels comfortable for you. Step your right foot back behind you, pressing into the hands, into the left foot, raise the right foot behind you to wherever it naturally goes to and gently lower. If you want to, you can inhale the right leg up and exhale the right leg down. Focus on the work of the buttock. Inhale the right leg up, exhale the right leg down. Slide the right foot back underneath the body. Take a moment to make sure you're feeling stable and then step the left foot back. Inhale the left leg up, exhale the left leg down. Focus on the left buttock. Inhale the left leg up, exhale the left leg down. One more time, inhaling up, Exhaling down, we're going to step the left foot underneath the body and then we're going to bend the knees. Inhale as we sweep the hands forward, drop the bottom, press through the legs, open the chest and exhale, bring the hands back to the center of the chest. Take a moment to rest with the arms down by the side and I will show you our next variation. So if at any point you don't fancy doing these variations, you can, you can take one of the previous variations or you can come and do your uh, earth salute a second time in the time it takes us to, to do the variations at the bottom. Okay, so this time, as you come into your forward bend, we're going to uh, bend the right foot, but keep the knees together. So bend the right foot so the heel comes towards the buttocks. And then from here, we're going to lengthen the right leg to wherever is good and then bring the knees together. That's it. Just lengthening the right leg and knees together, but staying on the left foot with the right foot off the floor all of the time. We'll do three to each side. OK, so in your Tadasana position, taking your uh, palms to face forwards, lengthening up, breathing in here. Breathing out the hands to the center of the chest. Inhale, reach the arms up and exhale as you separate the hands and drop the shoulders. Inhale, prepare with lift in the belly muscles and exhale as you lean over to the right side. Inhale back to center and exhale leaning to the left. Inhale back to center and exhale twisting first towards the right, arms opening at a T-shape. Inhale back to center and exhale twisting to the left. Inhale back to center. Exhale as you open your chest and then hold with your belly firm and your buttocks firm. Inhaling here, bending the knees as you exhale, folding forward into your forward bend or to the support that you reach for. It helps to have your hands a little bit further in front of you so that you're not folded towards your legs, but away from your legs, your torso is lifted. Here we're going to bring our feet towards each other so that our knees can touch. So feet don't have to touch, but knees are touching. And then we're going to bend our right foot so that the heel comes towards the buttock. Inhale as you lengthen your right leg away from your left leg and then exhale, bend your knees in to touch each other, right heel to buttock. Inhale, lengthen away and exhale, bending the knees. We'll do one more. Inhale, lengthen away, exhale, bending the knees. And then floating the right foot to the floor. Take a moment in the middle if you need to. And then bend your left foot so the heel comes towards your buttock. Inhale as you lengthen the left leg. Exhale, bring the knees together again. We call it flamingo pose. Inhale, lengthen away. And exhaling, flamingo. One more. Inhale, lengthen away. And exhaling, flamingo. We're going to float the left foot down to the right foot. And here, bend the knees to soften 
And then inhale, sweep the hands forward, drop your bottom, press through the legs, stand tall, open the chest. Exhale, the hands to Namaste. Gently release the arms and take a few breaths. We're going to change our uh, sequence now. So we're still going to work with our breath, um, but we're going to do uh, back bending instead of forward bending. So in our forward bending there, we've been activating the posterior chain. So the, the muscles that support the back of the body and the movement, and these can become a little lax and uh, loose if we spend a lot of time sitting. Um, so it's good to activate those because they help us to be strong in the front of the body as well, help to open the front of the body. So we're going to, for chair yogis, we're going to turn the chair a little bit around or come to the back of your chair if you want to use a chair and everyone is welcome to use the wall. Um, so, it, or something for support. So this time we do our usual side bends and twists. And then we're going to reach our hands in front of us to the chair if you're a chair yogi. And we're going to take the right hand and the right foot back behind us to open our chests. And we call this a uh, flying angel pose. If you want to, you can float the back leg off the floor. You don't have to. We're going to hold for a couple of deep breaths on each side. So if you're not using a chair, you do the side bend and the twist. We'll reach the arms over the head and then we will reach one arm down and the opposite arm and leg go backwards and we can lift. OK, so it's the same thing, but without holding onto a chair. Smashing stuff. So coming to the front of your mat. I might do this facing you guys, why not? Turning the palms forward and coming into that Tadasana. Taking a deep breath in. And exhaling, bringing the hands to the center of the chest. Inhale, reaching up and opening the palms at the same time. Exhaling, shoulders down. Inhale, lift in the belly muscles and exhale as you gently lean to the right side. Inhale, back to the center and exhaling to the left. Inhale back to center, twisting now, exhaling as you reach the left hand forward and right hand backwards. Inhaling to center, exhaling, reaching the right hand forward and the left hand backwards. Inhaling to center. From here, allow your breath to go. If you're a chair yogi, place your left hand down on the chair. And if you're not a chair yogi, reach your left hand out to the left. Why not? Let's get it involved. Then we're going to slide our right toes back behind us and at the same time, turn the right hand to face backwards if you can to open the chest. And here, if you can, floating the right foot off the floor, using a point of focus ahead of you that's not moving, taking a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And then we're going to slide the right foot back reach the right hand down to the side and we'll let the left hand come down as well. Take a moment, wiggle anything that needs wiggling and we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Inhale as you stand tall, exhale bring the hands to namaste, inhale reach up and exhale separate the shoulders, reach the shoulders down. Inhale lifting in the belly and exhale as you fold to the right side. Inhale back to the center and exhale, fold to the left. Inhale back to center, exhale as you twist. Inhale back to the center, exhale as you twist. Inhale back to the center, exhale the right hand down to your side or to your chair. Inhale, slide your left foot back. Exhale, turn your left palm backwards and reach the hand behind you as well. Inhale as you use your point of focus and float the back foot off the floor. It doesn't need to be much. Exhale and one more deep breath in and exhaling. Gently slide the foot back underneath the body and gently release the arms down to your side. Take a moment to wiggle in your shoulders or wiggle in your back, your hips or your wrists, whatever feels good. Letting your breath just be as it is. Awesome sauce. 
So for those who would like to take this a step further, we can do um, Natarajasana, the Lord of the Dance Pose or Dancer's Pose. Yeah, yes, it's all good. So for this pose, um, you will come into Flying Angel Pose. So imagine that I'm doing it on my right side. I've got my left arm either on the chair or out to the side. And I take Flying Angel Pose and then I gently bring the right heel towards the buttock. Now it becomes clear why we did uh, the other pose, the flamingo. And I take my right hand to anywhere on my foot. Now, if you don't naturally uh, easily grasp your foot or your ankle, then you don't need to. You can just reach the right hand behind you towards the right foot. And if you do, then that's great. And if you do and you're doing a standing version, she says, not demonstrating terribly well, you can reach your left arm up and then fold slightly forward if you want to, or you can keep it upright and just lengthen the foot behind you. So, Lord of the Dance Pose, Natarajasana, let's add it to the end of our sequence. So I'm going to turn back this way again. Remember, chair yogis, if you need to use the wall or a chair for support, please do so. And there's no need to hold onto your back leg at all. Standing in Tadasana, rolling the palms forwards, inhaling as you lift. Exhale, bringing the hands to Namaste. Firm the belly, firm the buttocks a little. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, separate the hands and drop the shoulders down. Inhale, feel that lift in the center. And as you exhale, gently bend to your right side. Inhale back to center and exhale to the left. Inhale back to center. Exhale as you reach the right hand behind you, left in front. Inhale back to center and exhale as you twist. Inhale back to center. And as you exhale, Drop your left arm to your side or to the chair and reach your right foot back behind you. So here you can just stick with this pose. If you want to do a little bit more, we're going to bend the right foot up towards the buttock and reach the right hand down towards the right foot. Use a point of focus ahead of you that's not moving. Keep your right knee and left knee together if you can or not push together, but in the same vein. Reach the left hand forward as you reach the right knee backwards. Flex through the heel of the right foot if you would like to protect your knee, if your knee is sensitive. Take a deep breath in, opening the chest, deep breath out. And then bring your knees back towards each other. Release your back foot down. Let your arms come down to the sides. Observe the difference between the two sides of the body. Let's go straight to the left side. Inhale as you stand tall. Exhale, bring the hands to Namaste. Inhale, reaching up, opening the chest. Exhale, settle the shoulders down. Inhale as you lift the belly and exhale as you gently bend to the right side. Inhale, back to center. Exhale as you bend to the left. Inhale, back to center. Exhale as you twist to the right. Inhale, back to center and exhale as you twist to the left. Inhale, back to center. Feel the right arm to the chair and to your side. Inhale as you lengthen the left leg back and the right, oh, sorry, the left arm back behind you. You can do your flying angel from here, or if you prefer, bringing the left foot towards the left buttock, reaching back to catch hold of the foot or just in the direction of the foot. Bring your knees towards each other. And then if you want to do more, you can reach the right arm forward, she says. It's okay to wobble, use a point of focus ahead of you. Keep the belly firm, flex the back heel if you need to, reach the arm forward or up, lengthen through your back leg. And that is what causes the shape, she says, gracefully falling out of it. And then when you're ready, you can reach your feet back down to the floor and your arms down to your side. In however, a graceful way you would like to dismount. And we'll take a couple of deep breaths here. Rolling your shoulders if you need to roll your shoulders, wiggling your hips if you need to wiggle your hips. Okay, so we, it's good to um, counter our uh, back bending pose with a different kind of pose. Um, and so we're going to do a downward dog 
uh, on the chair for chair yogis or on the floor for floor yogis. And in fact, we might do we might do both. We might do cat as well. So chair yogis, you use your chair as you would the floor. Your feet are underneath your uh, hips and your arms underneath your shoulders or slightly in front. Keep your knees soft and do your cat pose first, rolling through your spine. And every chair yogi in this class is experienced enough to know how to do that one. Uh, and then you can stand up and do your down dog using the back of the chair. Mat yogis, we're going to take ourselves to the floor in a, uh, in a different way. So at the back of your mat space, come up onto your tiptoes, lift your arms up in front of you, and then bend your knees over your feet to come as low down as you can, as slowly as you can, before reaching for the floor. Okay, so a nice little squat on the way down there. And here, we're doing cat pose first, so chair yogi's joining us as well. Tucking the back, uh, the toes under if you're on the floor, and then inhaling, looking forward and lifting the tailbone and the chest. Exhaling, press the mat away from you, hollow your belly. Tuck your chin to your chest and round through the spine. Inhaling forward. And exhaling, rounding the opposite way. Inhaling forward, keep the belly muscles a little bit active, even here. And exhaling, rounding through the spine. And then if you can, do a barrel roll with your chest, uh, with your torso rather. So you come up uh, in the center and then you take the right side of the body to the right, the belly towards the floor, the left side of the body to the left, and the back of the body up to the ceiling. So you roll sideways, laterally. Fantastic stuff. Don't forget your head, which I totally had. And then go in the opposite direction as well. Use your feet, your hands to press into the support you're using to give you that sense of lift and space. And then coming back to center. Chair yogis, take a moment to bring yourself up to standing and you can move into your downward dog at the back of your seat. Floor yogis, we're going to just Gently release our hips a little bit back towards our heels and then press the hands away from you and peel the knees off the floor. So the knees are very bent, the chest is towards the uh, thighs and we're going to uncurl our legs, taking the heels towards the mat. And if they don't reach, that's okay. They're not, it's not a prerequisite. And then we're just going to gently paddle through the backs of the legs. Chair Yogi is doing the same. So you can Focus on paddling through the backs of the legs, pressing the base of the fingers and the heels of the hands down, lifting in the belly, lifting in the tailbone. And then everyone can bend both knees and gently wiggle the hips from side to side. Just a gentle length across the sides of the body, smashing stuff. And then when you're ready, chair yogis, you can bring yourself to center, walk towards your chair and stand upright to hold on to the chair until you lose the dizzy feeling. And floor yogis, you can bring your knees down to the mat and we're all going to sit down. So come into a seated position that feels good to you. So if you're working with a chair, you simply sit in the chair, no problem at all. And I realized I can't see my clock. So you guys organize yourselves where you need to be. And I'm just gonna move my clock so I can definitely see it. So I don't run over time because I have a terrible tendency to do that. So your seat can be cross-legged, it can be seated, it can be kneeling if you want. If you're not comfortable cross-legged but you want to sit on the floor, you can have your knees bent and they can pull out to the sides and that sometimes helps you to feel that sort of centered lift um, but you still get the grounding of having your uh, sit bones on the floor. So coming into the seated position of your choice. Chair yogis, we're going to do this with our legs crossed in two directions. So you're going to repeat the sequence, uh, but keeping your knees just together. Or if you can easily cross your legs, you can cross the first one will be left in front of right. So apologies, those who are sitting on the floor, if you want to do left in front of right, you might want to rearrange yourself now. We're going to begin by placing our hands on our knees and chair yogis with your uh, knees apart just to begin with. 
and we'll do a little stirring of the upper body. So I think we did this last week, but I can't remember um, off the top of my head, so please excuse me. So we're just creating a little circle with the upper body, as if you had a pencil from the crown of your head and drawing on the ceiling. And it's a really nice way to sort of massage some of that tension that you might have created out of the back of the body. We're going the opposite way as well. If you want to, you can really let your whole torso get into this. You can push into your hands, you can lift and lower your head. Just find your way. And then we're going to come back to the middle and come sitting upright. Um, and so everybody, chair yogis with the knees together or the left leg crossed in front of the right, is going to sit up tall and take the right hand to the left knee or left thigh. Inhale your left hand up. And as you exhale, turn to the left and place that hand either on the chair seat behind you or the back of the chair or on the floor behind you. Rolling the shoulder blades towards each other, find some length through the spine. Feel that lift in the belly, in the pelvic floor, in the crown of the head. And then as you exhale, gently move yourself into the twist to a point that feels good for you. So you may already be there, that's okay. If you'd like to do a little bit more, you can breathe in again. Turn your head a little bit further, perhaps that opens a little bit of space in the upper back. One more deep breath in. And deep breath out. And then very slowly turning your head back to the center, releasing your arms, unwinding your spine and turning a little to the opposite side and back to center. Very good. Then we do the same thing to the opposite side. So we're going to take the left hand to the right outside of the knee, sitting really tall, inhale the right arm up. And as you exhale, take the hand down behind you. Your legs are still crossed in the same way. Roll the shoulder blades towards each other, feel the lift in the pelvic floor, the center of the body, the abdomen. Breathe in, think tall thoughts, and as you breathe out, gently turn into your twist. If you want to do a little bit more, you can breathe in again with the lift and breathe out as you turn your head a little further. Sometimes that opens a space. For me, it hasn't done anything on this side. Take another long, deep breath in, soften your shoulders. Long, deep breath out. Then inhale as you turn to the front with your head and exhale as you unwind your spine, turn a little to the opposite side and back to center. So chair yogis taking your knees apart, your feet apart, planting your feet on the floor. We're going to turn to our left thigh and fold towards our thigh. So if you're a chair yogi, I want you to lean on top of your thigh with your hands one on top of the other and just lean slightly from side to side, a little wiggle. If you're on the floor, hands wide apart, keeping your chest open and just shimmer, shimmer, sway your uh, torso from side to side, just a little bit might find that that just gets something really nice at the bottom of the back or in the sides. I find this just really nice at the bottom of my rib cage. And then coming back to center and we're going to cross our legs the opposite way. So if you're seated, seated the right foot in front of left and if you're on the chair, you either bring your knees back together again or you cross your right leg in front of your left. Sitting tall, we're going to take the left hand to the right thigh. So we're going back to the same side that we just did, but with the leg in front. Inhale the right arm up, lengthening up. And as you exhale, placing that hand behind you, it might feel quite different with the legs crossed differently. Feel that lift as you inhale, lift the pelvic floor, the abdomen, the crown of the head. As you exhale, gently moving into your twist. So we're not striving, we're not trying, we're not pushing. Inhaling once more, if you want to do a little bit more, turn your head a little bit further into the twist if that suits your neck. A deep breath in. Soften your shoulders down, a deep breath out. To come out, turn to the front with only your head. Exhale as you unwind your spine, releasing the arms, turning to the opposite side for a moment and back to center. 
Same thing, other side. So taking your right hand to your left leg, feeling that lift, inhale, the left arm up, reaching up, reaching over, reaching behind you, either for your chair or for the floor. Feel that lift as you inhale again, lifting the pelvic floor, the abdomen, the crown of the head, and as you exhale, moving into your twist. Inhale once more, and if you want to do more, exhale, turning your head a little bit further. One more long, deep breath in, and long, slow breath out. Inhale, turning to the front with your head, Exhale as you release your hands, unwind your spine, turn a little to the opposite side and back to center. Chair yogis, you can separate your feet and take your hands one on top of the other on your right thigh, keeping the elbows wide, little shimmer. Floor yogis, hands either side of the knee, slightly in front of you, so you have to lean forward over your right thigh and gently sway your body from side to side. And you can do as much or as little here. So if you want to go a little bit deeper, you can go a little bit deeper. If you want to keep it upright, you'll find that you just, uh, it's almost like gliding the shoulder blades over the rib cage, just finding that sense of fluidity, sense of release. And then when you're ready, you can breathe in coming up to center. And particularly if you've been sat cross-legged, breathing out as you extend your legs away from you. So chair yogis, you can do this too. You're going to keep your knees soft, but your legs extended slightly away from you. And we're going to make circles with our ankles. So the knees come apart and together, together and apart. And all that does is just release any tension from the hips. We'll go in the opposite direction as well. Very good. Now, chair yogis, we're going to do a uh, lying down on our tummies for a moment. So floor yogis, I'm going to get you there first. So you're going to swing your legs out and round behind you and fold down onto your belly. Make a pillow out of your hands. Turn your toes together and your heels apart. And take a few long, deep breaths here. You can shimmy your uh, hips from side to side as well. Now, chair yogis, uh, you don't want to get down to the floor. Uh, necessarily, if you want to, you can. So you can do this at the wall. So if you come to a wall, then you can reach your arms up and place your hands underneath your head. You can take your feet slightly further behind you and just lean your chest and your hips towards the wall. So you get a similar sort of uh, release of opening. If you want to, you can bend your knees and wiggle your bottom from side to side. Um, that would be fine too. And we're just going to take a couple of deep breaths. So if you're on the floor, taking your time to soften any effort in your shoulders, in your buttocks, in your belly muscles. Long deep breath in. Long, slow breath out. One more long deep breath in. Long, slow breath out. And chair yogis, you can find your way back to your chair by walking towards the wall, sliding your hands down to your side. And floor yogis, we're going to come back onto our hands and knees, and then everyone's going to do a final down dog. So chair yogis coming to your chair to do a final down dog, lifting the hips up, extending through the heels, a little paddle if your down dog is a little sticky then a little paddle is all good and a little paddle is always good anyway and if you want to you can keep both knees nice and bent and simply wiggle your hips from side to side which is lovely too helps to open the sides of the body and then whenever you're ready you can come back to sitting either on the floor or if you prefer in a chair and we're going to do a little seated uh, breathing exercise for relaxation. So, finding your way, I'll give you a few moments. Um, and if you want to uh, take something to sit on, uh, if you're on the floor, particularly a cushion or something just to lift your hips 
can make you a little bit more comfy and you might uh, choose a different position for sitting for longer periods of time. So we need to find a position where we can easily lift our spines upright. We don't need to have a straight back. We don't need to have a ramrod uh, back or anything like that. Just a, a sense of length. And to begin with, we're just going to observe our natural spontaneous breath. So finding your comfortable position, keeping your hands resting somewhere comfortable, <laughs> like your lap or your legs. Closing your eyes or gazing at one spot that's ahead of you and down on the floor. And notice the breath that you are breathing right now without any control. Notice which part of your body moves first as you breathe. Where do you notice your breath as your inhalation starts? Notice the coolness of air as it comes in through the nose. And the warmth of the breath as it leaves the body. See if you can follow that feeling of coolness up through the nostrils to the top of the nose, into the cavity behind the mouth and the nose. Maybe down the back of the throat. Maybe you can feel it at the base of the tongue. Maybe you can feel it as it comes down the throat and enters the trachea, the entrance to the lungs. See how far you can follow that coolness, that cool sensation. Maybe gently deepen your breath. And then move your focus to sensing your exhalation. So at what point are you aware of the warmth of the breath coming back out of the lungs? into the nose and out of the nostrils. And then leaving the sensation of the breath Just gently deepening the breath. If you can, a little bit more. And as you exhale, firming that space over the navel, just drawing the navel gently in to help press a little bit more air out of the lungs. Breathing deeply into the sides of the body, the chest, the back. And as you breathe out, using that gentle engagement over the navel to help your exhalation to be more full. 
Feel your breath expanding as it comes into the rib cage, the shoulder blades, the collarbones. Feel that length of exhalation drawing out as you try to exhale just a little bit more using your navel as well. Let's do a few more of these full yogic breaths. And then try counting the length of your inhalation. And the count, like for example, breathing in for one, two, three, and counting your exhalation, breathing out for one, two, three, etc. So just a few deep breaths. Trying to see how long you breathe in for and how long you breathe out for with no particular goal in mind. It's just an observation of how your breath is. Notice if your face is still soft, if your shoulders are relaxed, if your jaw is relaxed. Softening any tension if you find it. And then try extending your exhale by one count without altering your inhalation. If it feels uncomfortable for any reason, go back to how you were breathing before, soft, and slow and deep. Check your face for tension again, softening it where you find it. If you find tension in your throat, just swallowing once, letting your jaw relax. And at the end of your next exhalation, simply allowing your breath to find its natural spontaneous rhythm. If you've had your eyes closed, you may choose to keep them closed. You may open them a little gently. And if you've been sitting cross-legged, you might want to gently ease yourself out of the posture so that you stretch out your legs, maybe moving your feet and your knees a little bit Sometimes it's nice to give the knees a little bit of a massage and you can do that even if you're a chair yogi, you don't have to have sat cross-legged for that. Just rolling the ankles a little. So this, this practice that we've just done is called observing the natural spontaneous breath. And then we did a full yogic breath where we deepened the exhalation and used a little bit more muscular effort to find a fuller breath by lifting the rib cage, engaging, engaging the intercostal muscles and, and uh, lifting a little bit into the chest. And then we uh, developed a slightly longer exhalation. So some of you will automatically have found that your exhalation was longer than your inhalation when you came to count your breath. And that is, of course, part of our practice. Um, and we've been doing it for some time for some of you. So uh, that may have come automatically. And then 
For those of you who are new to breathing in this way, the reason why we extend the exhalation is because that is the passive response of the body. It's the uh, parasympathetic response of the autonomic nervous system to, to blind you with the science, but it's the relaxation response of the body. So it's our rest and digest um, response. So it encourages uh, good peristalsis through the digestive system, which aids good digestion and alleviates symptoms of things like irritable bowel syndrome and uh, anxiety tummy. Um, and it also helps us to find a little calmness of mind. So if you want to work with a longer exhalation, you can begin to develop this extended exhale. Doesn't matter what you start inhaling for, say you inhale for three, aiming to gradually work towards exhaling for six, but it may take some weeks. If you can easily do three to six and you come and talk to me, then we can work on extending your exhalation a little bit further, but that's slightly more advanced pranayama. So for tonight, we will leave our breathing there. I'd just like you to know why you're doing things and gather yourself some relaxation things. So if you're Needing a blanket, I'm just about to go and find one because Poppy's stolen the, the wall to, to make a, a den earlier. So please excuse me. So finding a blanket, if you're in a chair, you can wrap it around you. If you would like to, we've done an awful lot of um, uh, work on our feet today. So chair yogis, I'm afraid you're stuck in the chair or reclining wherever you are. but Floor yogis, if you'd like to, you can use a chair or the wall to use uh, to put your legs up the wall for a little bit of relaxation. So if you like to do that, if it suits you, then you can try that for size. Viparati Karani. And for if you are not doing that, then we come to lying down on our backs. And so if you have any last movements you want to make, if you want to draw your knees into your chest, chair yogis, you can do this one at a time and rock the knees from side to side. Um, floor yogis both at the same time and just gently rock from side to side. And then you can release the back in this way. If you want to use any supports, of course, you're always welcome to. And when you're ready, Chair yogis with your feet supported if you need that and your arms resting on your thighs under your cozy blanket, I hope. Floor yogis with your feet wide apart, toes falling out to the side, arms relaxed away from the body with the palms turned upwards or with the hands resting on the abdomen. Let's begin by all of us together taking a deep breath in and sighing out through the mouth. Ah, and repeat three more times, a long deep breath in, let all of your effort go. Ah, a long deep breath in, let your muscles begin to relax. Ah, last deep breath in and surrender your weight down into your mat or into your chair. Ah. Take a moment to allow your breath to fall away into quietness. Feel your awareness in your forehead, allowing it to soften and spread. Feel the area around your eyes relaxing. Your mouth, tongue and jaw releasing. Take your awareness into the back of your body and become aware of all of the parts of the back of your body that are in contact with something. It might be the soles of the feet, the backs of the thighs, the buttocks and the back of the body. It could be the backs of the arms, the back of the head, the heels of the feet, the backs of the calves. 
wherever your body is touching something, allow that part of the back of the body to feel heavy, surrendering to gravity, releasing downwards. Bring your awareness to all the parts of the back of your body that are not touching something. It could be the wrists, the small of the back, the back of the neck, the Achilles, backs of the knees. It could be the soles of the feet, the back of the head, the backs of the shoulders, the back of the calves. Observe the sensation of space between your body and the floor or the seat or the chair. Allow the whole of the back of the body to feel heavy, warm, supported, and releasing down. Move your awareness to the front of your body. Become aware of the space over you and around you. Feel the touch of air on your face. Feel the movement of your clothes on your skin as you breathe. Feel the warmth of the blanket over you if you're using one. Feel the sensation of holding space in the palms of the hands or the sensation of the hands against the body. Move your awareness to your breathing and gently deepen your breath again. Inhaling for the count of three or four and this time exhaling for the same count of three or four. Inhaling for three or four. Exhaling for three or four. Inhaling light, harmony, energy. Exhaling tension, fatigue, negativity. Inhaling light, energy, harmony. Exhaling tension, fatigue, negativity. Allow your breath to fall in this rhythm for the remainder of your relaxation whenever you're aware of it. The body relaxing a little deeper with every exhalation.
Gently begin to deepen your breath and bring your awareness back to your hands and your feet by wiggling your fingers and toes. And if you're ready, you can maybe roll your wrists, roll your ankles. In your own time, take a big, long, deep breath in, stretch the body in a ripply kind of way, stretching one side, then the other, arms, legs. And if you're on the floor, you can bend your knees into your chest, hug them towards you, and gently rock from side to side. If you're on your chair, you can do a similar thing by bending one knee at a time, but you may not want to. You may be just fine sitting and stretching. When you're ready, if you're on the floor, turning to one side, taking a moment curled up on your side, just letting your body come around a little at a time. And then in your own time, coming into a comfortable seated position, everybody keeping their eyes closed if they can. We'll bring the palms of the hands together and rub them vigorously, pressing the hands firmly, rubbing the palms together vigorously. I might have said that already. Getting some heat into the hands. And when they feel like they're getting a bit warmer, just press a little harder, rub a little faster. Oh, and then placing the hands over the eyes. So you feel that warmth soften and release the area around the eyes. Linking into your palms a few times before you release your hands down as you open your eyes. Namaste, guys. Thank you very much for joining me for this practice. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope those little tips to start your day well uh, pay dividends this week. <laughs>